Hi all and welcome. Hi all and welcome back to my very first run of Siberia, the GOG version. And we are still dealing very much with making some feet. Yes. And we will uh, take another stab at it. But before we do that, I just wanted to say that if you happen to enjoy the video or the channel, I would love it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons, obviously. And now we, oh yeah, 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 uh, we have another attempt at making the correct type of beat. I hope I picked the, the right color. Um. Alright, so these are wooden legs. Maybe they're always wooden, but hopefully the right color now. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope I haven't made a mistake. These feet are incorrect, Kate Walker. Well, okay. Let's look at this again. So I think it's this color, but well, they're all brown. I don't think there were any like really dark ones, were there? Maybe they were. Anyway. Back to the grind. Okay, so let's go with the darkest ones we can get. Eat these other ones? We have returned with even more feet. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope I haven't made a mistake. These feet are incorrect, Kate Walker. Okay, Oscar, you're, you're starting to get on my nerves a little bit. This one doesn't look right. I think it might be this one. Might be? Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope I haven't made a mistake. These feet are incorrect, Kate Walker. I mean, it looks a bit light, but sure. I like how they look exactly the same in that little cutscene, but at least now I am 99.9% .9 sure we actually got the correct ones because we had a different cutscene and we did get that big block of wood into the mix. So I think, I do believe we are onto a winning horse this race. I wonder where, what, what happened to all the discarded ones. Did he keep them as a hobby? Yeah, it still said wooden legs, but these are some uh, quality stuff. Wooden legs this time around.
Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope they fit. Kate Walker, I see you managed to produce two XZ2005 underscore B models. Allow me to express a real feeling of joy, Kate Walker. They really suit you. Comfy? Very. You are very kind, Kate Walker. I am sorry to have to leave you. Where are you going? I must find my train. Its departure is imminent. He closed the door, you know, that's always something. Okay, I am almost certain that we're done here because getting Oscar up and running was probably the main the main golden factory. I'm not entirely certain where we haven't been now. Maybe we'll have to go back and look in the building some more. And as I mentioned previously, sorry about the thin black lines that appear at times. Just one of those things that comes with the improved uh, screen settings and graphics. Okay, back down on the street. So we went all the way in that direction. And I just assumed that this would be returning to where where we came from? But we haven't really explored. We haven't seen. Oh, so this kind of was the way we came. We saw them, like the funeral procession, going up the hill. So yeah, that's the gate. Yeah, so we, we saw this in the um, intro, but I thought that Automaton closed the gate. Maybe he didn't do a proper job. Hello. Kate, so what's new? We've got a problem, Mr. Marson. <gasps> what problem? Come on, Kate, don't beat around the bush. There's maybe an heir. What? Haunts. Anna Varlberg's brother. Uh, looks like he's still alive. We can't buy the factory without his consent. What? What is this? Where's this mystery brother come from? And more to the point, where is he? What did the notary say? Nothing. I mean, nothing else. You know, sir, it's an odd town here. Everything's odd. The people, things. The situation's not straightforward. I have a small bit of research to do. Listen to me, Kate. Universal Toys is one of our biggest clients, and I don't care how weird that town is. All that matters is that you do not set foot back in New York before you've tied up the deal. Get the picture. Yes, Mr. Marson. You can count on me. I... Darn it! Well, he's an ass. And... Uh, I think we can go around. Let's start by trying to go inside. No point. It's locked. Yeah, I kind of figured it would be... Okay, so now we have the choice in which direction do we want to go. Ah, I 
guess this is the closest one. We cannot look at the gravestones, but we can go even further back. But let's start here. Ah. Okay, this time. We do have the cogs. Oh, it's an elevator. That's an automaton just hanging around. Some eggs, little birdie. And we scared it. If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. Yeah, we need like an, another one of those cards like we had in the factory, I think. Okay, I think we're actually done here. We need to get ourselves um, a punch card. Down we go. Okay. At least we uh, solved that little puzzle. Let's um, continue down this path and see what we run into. It's a big old tree. Let's see if we can go inside of here. Probably locked. I mean, it is an adventure game. Well, I stand corrected. It was uh, weirdly enough not closed. Things jammed. Hmm. Okay, so we. I can't open it. Yeah, we need that. Uh, can we do something up here by the? Okay, look at the crucifix. I I think. That's. <laughs> Is that an automaton instead of Jesus? Oh, hello. Most clever. Okay, so what would that key uh, do? I don't think we... Um, I don't think that's for that. Is that just a door? No point. It's locked. Okay. This is the only thing in the room, so it has to be. No, no, no. Oh, there we go. Ah, this thing's jammed. Okay, so that's something else. Uh, is that a punch card? Red punch card. Okay, so are there more of them? Yes. That's definitely a yes on that one. Get some candles and that's it. Another one. Okay. Okay, let's see. What do we have now? We have the red punch card, the 
blue punch card, the purple punch card, and the green punch card. I think we were through all the drawers, so are we now down? Are we done? Still a little bothered about that one. Okay, that's weird because this one... Yeah, there, it seems like there's something stuck behind it. Uh, oh, wait. Ah. <clears throat> to my successor, the Valadilan Parish Priest. The sanctity of confession is a sacred vow, so these revelations are the result of much soul-searching and reflection. One day in March 1938, Rudolf Vorlberg knocked at my door. I was a young priest then and was overawed by the dominant personality of the town's most important figure. I remember it was raining that day, and beneath his dripping hair, Monsieur Vorlberg's face was the very expression of eternal pain itself. Through gritted teeth, his eyes swimming with grief, he announced that his son Hans had just died. He wanted me to come immediately to bless the body. Enter the dark drawing room at the family home. Hans's coffin was set in the middle, sealed shut. Monsieur Vorlberg explained to me that he wanted no one to see the body of his son. Hans's bad, badly mangled body, corpse, had been discovered at the bottom of the precipice. It was presumed that he had slipped and fallen badly. Despite his 18 years of age, the young Vorlberg did not have all his faculties. I believed him. I led the funeral and officiated the mass and burial. We buried Hans Vorlberg with all the dignity and solemnity befitting such a tragedy. Life indeed hangs by a thread and I would have surely forgotten this episode. Only. Several years later, after her father's death, Anna Bulbert had an accident at the factory and nearly died. Such a close call with death seemed to awaken her a need to confess. What I heard that day would haunt my dreams thereafter. She told me that the body of her younger brother, Hans, was not at rest in the family tomb for the simple reason that he was still alive. I had blessed and sanctified an empty coffin. I had assisted and sanctioned a masquerade staged by Rudolf Vorlberg himself to exorcise the blind hatred he felt for his son. His son had left and he felt betrayed. The man who preferred to believe and make others believe his son was dead rather than accept his, this truth had shamefully deceived me. What kind of priest was I? And what kind of priest would I become? A merciful father alone would be my judge. It is my duty to inform you that one of your flock is still unaccounted for. I leave this terrible secret in your hands to do with what you will. Leon Bonard, priest. That's a key. And now, I think we're done. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think we can do anything more in here. So I will return to the roof. Yeah. Yeah, we cannot go any further here. So back to the roof it is, and we now have four cries with punch cards. Start with this one, I guess. No longer need these punch cards. Ah. Okay, I mean, hooray, I guess, because that was the correct one, but 
I wonder what the other ones would have done. Did we? Yeah, we threw those away. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Musical Automaton. I kind of wish we had done it wrong. Because now we'll never know what might have happened. off to desecrate, I was about to say, but we're not really uh, desecrating anything because it's empty, you know? It is indeed empty. That's a very cool looking tube. Key and This is not a small crypt by any means. Uh, no, it's really, really not. Oh, we have a lot of Vorlbergs. So that's Anna Vorlberg. She already has her plaque. And here's Hans, Jean, Rudolf, Isabel. And Pierre? Anyway, can we do anything with Anna's? No. Oh, so it was just Oh, that's another cylinder. Valadilan Gazette, 1938. Mountain Fall kills local figure. The Vorbler family was struck by tragedy gesture. Rudolf Vorbler discovered the lifeless body of his son Hans at the bottom of the precipice. Loose rocks and poor visibility occasioned by the morning mist were probably the cause of the young man's fall. This is the theory put forward by the family as there were no witnesses. Hans had just turned 18 years of age. Eight years ago, he suffered a similar serious accident from which he never fully recovered the full use of his mental faculties. Despite living almost as a recluse, he was still a well-known figure as the future Vorberg manufacturing lay in his hands. We at the Valadilan Gazette wish to extend our deepest sympathy to the family and express our sincere condolences to Rudolf Vorberg and his daughter Anna, who today becomes, uh, becomes the sole inheritor of the automaton factory. Huh. Yeah. And I think maybe having just solved this, we'll have a little break and be back in the next part. Thank you for following along in my adventure in the first Siberia. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I would love to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And if I saw you again in the next part, but for now, it is time to say bye bye.